Here's a fun little differential equation that I received in my email a few days back. So let's see what we can do with it. Well, first up, notice that if we write this as 2 times the inverse tangent of x by y times the derivative here, dy by dx, and this is all equal to the natural log of 1 by x squared plus y squared, then we see immediately that this looks nothing like a separation of variables or linear equation. And those are, in fact, the two structures that we look for whenever we see a first order uh, differential equation like this. So we can just throw them out of the window, and this could be an exact equation. And if that is true, then we actually have a very cool and workable solution on our hands. So let's uh, reciprocate the argument of the natural logarithm and introduce a negative sign because of that. And next we're going to do what every pure mathematician hates. We multiply both sides by dx and that will of course give you 2 times the inverse tangent of x by y times dy. And you can shift this to the right hand side after that multiplication with dx. So plus the natural log of x squared plus y squared dx and all of this equals zero. Now this structure is quite attractive because if you get something like dy times the derivative of a function f with respect to y plus this dx times the derivative of the same function with respect to x and this is in fact the differential of the function f and if this equals 0, then all of this implies that your function of x and y equals some constant c. So that makes our lives quite easy. All we have to do is look for the required function. Condition for exactness is the equality of the mixed second partials. So d square f by dy dx should be equal to d square f by dx dy. Now, if we name our functions like this one being equal to m and this one being equal to n, then we see that if m equals this partial derivative and n equals this partial derivative, then this second partial here, let me just zoom out to get a better visual. So this second visual, uh, this second uh, partial derivative here reduces to the derivative with respect to y of uh, df by dx, and df by dx is in fact n. So we have the derivative of y with respect of n with respect to y, and in similar fashion, you can deduce that this here is the derivative with respect to x of m. So we're basically looking for this condition here that n sub y should should be equal to m sub x. And let's check this condition here and now. So uh, if this is m here, m equals 2 times the inverse tangent of x by y, and taking the derivative with respect to x gives me 2 times 1 by 1 plus x squared y squared, and differentiating with respect to x will give you 1 by y in the numerator. And simplifying by multiplying upstairs and downstairs by y squared will give you 2y divided by x squared plus y squared. In similar fashion, what about uh, n sub y? So n sub y, where n is the natural log of x squared plus y squared, it's quite obvious that n sub y would be equal to 2y divided by x squared plus y squared. So yes, they are perfectly equal, and the condition for exactness is met. So we have a couple of, um, you may say, partial differential equations in the function f that can be solved pretty easily. So pick any one of them and then we can use the information from the other to solve completely. So let's pick this one because the inverse tangent looks a lot scarier. And if I write df by dx as being equal to the natural log of x squared plus y squared, and I integrate this with respect to x, then this will give me, well, I'm going to have to use integration by parts here, which is the favorite tool of a friend of mine who has a picture of a cat and often comments on the videos with useful insights, especially on integration by parts. So yeah, this one's for you, dude. 
So integrating 1 with respect to x gives you x times the natural log of x squared plus y squared minus the integral of the integrated function times the derivative with respect to, uh, wait a second, the derivative with respect to x of this function here, the natural logarithm function. So this will reduce to 2x divided by x squared plus y squared dx. And you can just take the x, uh, take the 2 outside and multiply by, and multiply the two x's to get x squared. Now this can be solved quite easily using uh, a simple trick of adding zero. And uh, what kind of strange magic is that? Well, it's absolutely nothing. We have x times the natural log of x squared plus y squared minus twice the integral of x squared plus y squared and minus y squared divided by x squared plus y squared divided by x squared plus y squared. So there you go. Zero comes in handy quite a bit. And these cancel out to give you under integration that will result to 2x. And this here would be an inverse tangent, right? This should be, uh, so let me just write out the whole thing, the natural log of x squared plus y, y squared. And you have a negative sign here and two negatives then make a positive and y squared is just a constant in the x world and you have this two being multiplied and um, x squared plus y squared, so divide by y, and inverse tangent of x by y. So you can just write this as 2 times y, uh, times the inverse tangent of x times y, and let me just move this a bit because I still have one very important term. Remember that you started off with the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So because you were integrating a partial derivative, that means instead of an arbitrary constant of x, you're going to have to place here a function g of y only, because on partial differentiation, it gives you a zero. So this is what the function f of x and y looks like after integrating one of the partial derivatives. Okay, so we have the structure for the function f, and we have some information that the partial derivative of f with respect to y equals m, which is twice the inverse tangent of x by y. And now would be an excellent time to like and subscribe to the channel. So anyway, if I differentiate partially with respect to y, then everything on the right hand side gives me x is a constant, so that's going to be 2xy divided by x squared plus y squared. 2x is a constant in the y realm, and here I'm going to have to use the product rule. So, okay, 2 times inverse tangent x by y plus 2y times, this reduces to 1 by x squared plus y squared, or just, uh, yeah, okay, cool. And a uh, x is a constant, so you have negative x by y squared plus the derivative of g with respect to y. And for this term here, multiplying upstairs and downstairs by y squared helps quite a bit because we now see that we have this term, this term, plus 2 times, um, now the y squares cancel out, and the numerator and the denominator looks like x squared plus y squared now. And we have a negative 2xy term as well. So negative 2xy. And we see some nice cancellations here on this side and this side. So all of this implies that the derivative of y with respect to, uh, the, der the derivative of g with respect to y equals zero, which implies that g of y is just some constant of integration, right? So now that we have a complete structure for a function, we can write out our answer that f of x, y equals a constant, right? And because we have now two constants involved in our solutions, because of g of y being in being part of f of x and y, so let's just write this as c sub 1, and this is c sub 2, and then we can club them up together as c, right? So this implies that the solution to our differential equation is, in fact, uh, 
x times the uh, times the natural logarithm of x squared plus y squared minus 2x plus 2y inverse tangent of x and y equal to some constant c. And that is the end of our video today where we solved a fascinating differential equation. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.